I'm Salma Abdullah and I'm the co-founder of Andiria. Andiria is a platform that amplifies stories from Sudan and South Sudan. And uh, we're, we're merely based, uh, we're merely focused on the culture, contemporary, social aspects of storytelling about the people of Sudan and South Sudan. So this is what we do. We're a um, digital magazine and a digital platform accessible to everyone all, all over the world. Welcome to Innovator Tribe Outside the Bubble. A show about bridging the gap between the inspiration of an idea to the creation of a product. Amar, what's up, man? What's good, Toye? How, how you feeling, man? I'm good. I'm good. I just... uh. I felt re-energized. I just did a, a little detox uh, over the last couple of weeks. So I'm really feeling uh, refreshed now. For real, like that's that's crazy. I'm, I'm you guys send me the info for that detox. I'm kind of do that, you know. Myself. For sure, man. For sure, man. Definitely uh, feel a l- little bit more energized. You know, really ready to take on the day much earlier. You know, you're a morning person. I'm definitely not a morning person. But this detox definitely uh, help, 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 help me get there a uh, little by little. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, we need you to join the club, man. I need, I need, I need you to respond to my 5 a.m. text messages. <laughs> yeah, you, you love sending those. And I do love looking at them and then turning and turning over. <laughs> I'm going to get to this guy a little, little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, when, it's when my brain's oh, fresh. Man. It's like it's when, it's when the ideas start just flowing, you know. But yeah, nah, I totally get it. I totally get it. Once you're in that zone, you just gotta let them off. But you know, so I, <laughs> I, I definitely uh, respond uh, when I'm when I'm refreshed and, and actually able to understand, comprehend <laughs> what I'm reading, <laughs> which is a couple hours after after you wake up. But like I said, I'm I'm I'm, I'm getting better. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get there too. If I get some extra hours in the day, yeah, I'm already at my desk by the time you're like cracking up for your eyes. <laughs> But, but, you know, funny enough, I think, I think that's a great segue into our interview today, uh, because literally we were able to interview, uh, somebody that was a few hours ahead of us in, in, on the continent, uh, of Africa. Uh, we actually met with, uh, Salma, uh, Abdullah, who, uh, is the co-founder of Andaria. And she literally joined us around like four or five o'clock her time to be able to share her story. So definitely a uh, shout out to, to Salma and you know that she's, she's definitely a trooper. Yeah. Um, it, I felt like we were in the, um, exception movie or something like that because like she was in another day, she was in the future and we were in the presence or whatever you want to call it. It was just cool just to like think of that for, I don't know. I think I'll wear stuff like that. <laughs> stuff yeah. Like yeah. That, yeah. So. I can see you that. <laughs> I, I could, yeah. <laughs> uh, Whatever. <laughs> but but yeah, so it was it was a great conversation, and you know Salma she she has a, a another co-founder as well, and you know we'll definitely get into that. But this 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 episode was very interesting to me because the the platform that they're building Andria is a platform that is essentially catered to Sudan and the the Sudanese diaspora, not only on the continent, but outside the continent. And they've been very mindful in how they uh, went about, one, on understanding the problem that they're trying to solve, and then also, you know, making sure that they had, you know, various experts to help shape the solution that they were going to create to address the problem that they that they saw in, in Sudan and within their community. Yeah, I mean, like, this is going to sound super cliche but i mean you really can't get more outside the bubble than than this building a technology-based company in sudan in south sudan and so um it was just really um inspiring to hear like how they overcame some of the unique challenges that that they face to gain some traction and and really be um looked upon as the platform that can provide customer um, consumer insights for that region when it comes to um digital products and so um interesting story just to you know be inspired on, on how you can uh have an idea and, and want to use um technology as a platform to carve out your own voice and um and really you know find a find a solution uh, through, through any means necessary so that stood out to me it was also you know some very unique problems that they have to face being that uh 
They're servicing not only Sudan, but a wider diaspora of the Sudanese community around the world. And one of those uh, interesting problems that I found very interesting was they literally were not able to leverage tools such as Facebook uh, and Google to, you know, get attract, get traction to the website and create a marketing campaigns around that just because of economic embargoes uh, between uh, Sudan and, and, you know, the West, Western community. Um, and they actually go into, you know, how they're able to actually work around that, which is, you know, one thing that I think is very interesting because uh, as we, as we really kind of get outside the bubble, you know, you have very unique challenges that people are facing, uh, but somehow still being able to find a way to overcome those obstacles. So before we jump into the episode, we want everybody to um, head over to www.innovatortribe.com. If you're vibing with the show, love the content, head to the website and um, you can j- drop your email, uh, sign up, and that way you'll be you know, able to connect with us directly and just learn about all the the news and updates that um, that we have going on with the show. Yeah, the new the website is is up and running now. Uh, definitely go check it out, innovatortribe.com. And when you do get on the website, go ahead and subscribe, submit your email because we have some really really great information uh, that only people on that email list will uh, get. So definitely, uh, you know, make sure you go to the website and, and hit subscribe. And so with that, um, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the show. Let's do it. A couple weeks ago, just going through my, my daily blog list, and I uh, ended up at uh, AFK Insider, which is uh, essentially a website that has news around the African continent, around technology, business, culture, just a variety of different things, and came across an article about uh, Salma and Omnia and Andrea, their their company. You know, went to the website and saw that they had some really, really great content. The, co- the website was really polished. Everybody needs to go definitely check check it out. And like I said, it is a, a company that is based on the continent of Africa. Specifically, it is uh, based in Sudan. And both of the co-founders are actually living in two separate countries right now. So we definitely want to get into that and see how that works yeah. out. But you know, I reached out to them and they responded. And here we are today uh, talking to uh, Salma, one of the co-founders, and really looking to share your story and and uh, about uh, Andrea and you know really highlight you know some of the great things that you guys are doing out there. Yeah, thank you guys for inviting us. Actually, me and I were quite excited to be on your podcast and reach out to the wider continent um, and see all these efforts. And actually, yeah, we've done the feature with AFK Insider uh, just a few weeks ago, and it was also an exciting opportunity to be featured in there. Oh, you're you're well, on a momentum roll right now. That's that's <laughs> exciting. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, before we before we we dive into the show, we always ask uh, one particular question um, at the top, and it really helps set this tone. That question is uh, really tailored to, you know, when you have an important when we have an important meeting or a, a a big pitch um, that that you have to deliver. Uh, what is that one song that um, uh, if, for Toya and, and ourselves is is normally a, it's generally a hip hop song? But what's that one song that gets you in the zone? Well, I have so many songs that would get me in the zone. But I've, l- lately, I've been listening to Jimmy uh, Jimmy Cliff. I was born to men. It's uh, an all time favorite. So nice, nice, nice. I. Uh, I have, I don't think I've heard that one, but I'm I'm definitely gonna uh, go check that out. Yeah, Jimmy Cliff is a real hero. I love him. So you know, one of the things that I'm sure everybody is wondering is what was the the spark behind the idea of Andrea? I'd say the spark for us was actually the real problem and the gap and what is Andrea doing and what is needed right now. Um, when we met Omni and I. Uh, a lot of our discussions, uh, both of us as Sudanese diaspora, is uh, was revolving around the fact that we don't have any 
uh, reliable digital content that we would like, reliable and relatable digital content that we'd like to see and uh, be informed about in Sudan or South Sudan for that matter. A lot of the news that or the uh, culture or content that's being covered on the internet is usually uh, a narrative from either like uh, it's not a narrative by the Sudanese youth or the South Sudanese youth. It's rather about the West, and it's also like covering a very negative aspect only, and they're being focused on it for the longest time. Uh, we we acknowledge and we uh, we we know it exists, but however, there is a lot of the positive aspects that we'd like to see and see it in a nice visual way. So we wanted, okay, we need to. Um, if, if this is something that we need, then let's go ahead and make it. It's gonna make the perf- perfect sense for us to do it and address it. So this is how the idea sparked of building uh, a platform that covers uh, social, cultural. Uh, women's topics, uh, environment, tech, entrepreneurship, all these uh, stories that we wanted to feature and to know about our communities and present it to the world to re- to uh, to represent and brand Sudan and South Sudan. Awesome, awesome. Just just following up on that. So, so do so do either of you actually have like a technology backgrounds? Like what 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 is your background? Okay, so our backgrounds are. Uh, actually uh, nicely complement each other uh, at the time when we started the the project uh, Omnia was based in California and so the tech scene was super hyped up over there and she she comes from um, she had a, a biology background in science in college however she worked a lot of uh, web development and also editorial planning and putting out editorial content. And at the same time here, I am majored in marketing back in college. However, when I started working, I'm working at El Jazeera Media Network. So I was really highly exposed to uh, media production, digital media, software building and website building. So that was uh, also uh, along with, with my work in marketing and promotion. So that kind of like helped us kind of frame the thing, like have the necessarily tools to build such a platform in the best way possible. I love to hear these stories form because, you know, it's the it's the beauty of uh, having that taking that, that entrepreneurial initiative and then. When you don't hear your voice represented, uh, specifically yours within like the, the Sudan, South Sudan audience space from from um, the, the internet digital content space, creating your creating your megaphone and using technology as that leverage to you know uh, disseminate this content that you feel is not represented, and so it's, it's it's awesome that that you guys were able to bring your skill sets together and start carving out a path that uh, represents you and, and represents your your why. I think the. The what is what gets you started, and what and what keeps you going too into that once you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, I, I I'm interested to explore that the the why behind the, the, the work you're doing with, with, with Andrea and um how how that's how that's continuing to to develop over time. Um, could could you just expound uh, expand upon that that story a little bit? Okay, so the why, as I mentioned earlier, realize the gap that and basically how such content does not exist and at the same time there is an uh, an aspect to it that in 2011 when uh, when uh, South Sudan secession from Sudan we um, n- now we're confronted with a generation that does ha- that does not that doesn't have any idea about what Sudan and South Sudan were at some point and a lot of the cultural commonalities that bring us together so we kind of wanted to be that digital reference point for the generations kind of to come to see, hey guys, at some point we were, you know, uh, part of a, a, a bigger country and uh, we have a lot in common and also open the, the, the space for dialogue to between these two communities. And a lot of the, uh, uh, sadly, a lot of the Sudanese community are quite polarized well, when whether whether it's ethnicity or uh, race or religion and so on. That's awesome because I feel like you know even myself as a Nigerian, I feel like a lot of times people don't even understand the diversity that can exist. You know, not only on the continent but also within you know countries as well. You know, it seems like obviously you guys you know recognize that you know right now is a perfect time to be able to create a platform that allows you to create a, a narrative around the culture and around the community and around the, 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 the region and the country. Yes. As well as making sure that a lot of this history and information is disseminated to such a wide audience, right? That is, you know, what the internet is, is essentially democratizing information. And as long as people in as long as people have access to the internet and it from from my research 
mm-hmm. internet access in Sudan right now is 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 twenty five percent, which is you know well above I would say even you know other countries on the continent and even what people would you know expect of a country within within the continent. So. Yeah, that's been uh, the internet reach and penetration in Sudan has been really doing well in the past three years. And in Sudan, we have like four um, uh, four networks. Uh, so the, they've been really having some great efforts into expanding and reaching out to the people. And also the the uh, the culture itself of consuming news and reading uh, content online on your, on your mobile phone has expanded massively in Sudan. So um, so this really helped us. Like the scene was already kind of set before we st- before we started in Lydia. So with that internet penetration and uh, con- consumption of content online, it really helped a project in, like in Lydia to take off. So now I think the ideal time to start off a, a digital project in the Sudanese or South Sudanese market. However, the sanctions, uh, they because uh, as you may be aware, um, Sudan is under economic sanctions from the states. So uh, so this has been quite a hurdle for us now in terms of uh, distributing content or, um, or reaching out to, uh, obviously we're, be, we were able to put up a, put a website and reach out to audiences. However, on Facebook and Google and YouTube, you have all these um, advertising tools to help you reach out and explore new audiences and widen your reach. However, due to sanctions, we were not able to like target people in Sudan who are like our biggest audiences. So yeah, this was yeah. quite a, cha- a technological cha- challenge oh, for wow. us. Just to make sure I'm, I'm following. So you're saying yeah. that the normal tool tools for marketing for you know any sort of uh, internet application, uh, obviously that would be like you know the social media, Facebook, yes. YouTube, uh, other marketing platforms where you would actually be able to pay for some sort of campaign. You got yeah. you're saying that you don't have access. To that right now because of the economic sanctions okay so what we don't have access on is facebook or google do not do not allow you to target sudan like you can choose whatever country out there egypt whatever but my main target audience sudan i can't have it because facebook cannot make money off sudan or the sudanese market and same thing for google and so on so this has been like one of the hurdles for us when we're reaching out to audiences but however we're, we we we're still not able to overcome it honestly but we kind of find ways around it like we try to target like Sudanese diaspora in Egypt or so but again that's not effective especially especially like for cost per dollar it's uh, it's quite pricey so mm, however sure. this yeah so however this kind of made us look back and really focus on, on making our content like top notch uh, like beautiful you know attractive and ha- kind of like push it to organically through the people and increase the shareability and engagement. So in a sense, also it's been a blessing, but it's such like a main hurdle right now. <laughs> you know, that's, that's one of my, my favorite things about, about Africans is, you know, you can, you know, tie one hand behind the back, but they're still going to figure out some way to, you know, reach whatever goal that they're trying to attain. So, uh, you know, I, I think we definitely, I'm sure we definitely want to get into, you know, some of these, some of these ways. Uh, and I think I'm probably going to, ask what I was about to ask, but before we even get into the marketing and the content creation, uh, can we dig into, so you guys had the idea and how, how, how did you, how did you guys meet? I'm, I'm kind of curious. Okay. So we initially met on, t- on Twitter, Omni and I, and, uh, from there we'd usually like engage in conversation. I know for and stuff. So, and then we happened to be in Sudan around the same time. For, uh, we were both on a holiday. And we met once in person, and in um, that one time we sat in uh, uh, um, in a coffee shop in Khartoum, and all these kind of topics came out. And um, actually, our kind of problem statement was uh, the main um, the main discussion point for us. So we we're like, yeah, we don't have this visual content or something nice to look back to, and 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 having us both being a Sudanese diaspora. We'd kind of like relate on the on, on the same things that we would like to see in Sudan or would like to do a diaspora. We talk about our connection to back home and the community and how we kind of kept a strong bond, even if we are far away and so on. And then we only met once after that. She went back to Cali and I was back to Doha. And then we we started like, hey, let's start working on this project. And we and, and thankfully we were able to. We kind of adopted a, a global globalized model with working remotely. We had our developers sitting in India and our contributors all over the globe and Sudan and Sassadon. Like organic, authentic relationships, um, they, they, they make it easier when you're really trying to, you know, 
take on an entrepreneurial initiative like, like you guys are doing yourself. So I, I kind of want to dig into, you know, like how, how like after that connection is made and you guys like made a decision that uh, Andrea was something that you're going to build. Run us through the story about overcoming like those those early conversations in the days of how you were going to position it and those decisions and and this the, the what you had to do to build it for that first version um give us that that, that behind the scenes story okay so when we were like building it first we um we discussed it um together and then we also opened it up to uh, our close friends and community like just to have their input well because you know it's always important to have a focus group or a trusted group that can tell you what you're not seeing because when you when you're immersed in an idea you think um, you're so focused so you kind of like fail to see other aspects of it so we made sure we had that like feedback from trusted uh, people who are, who are experts and so on to give us this like how we can make this idea better and then uh, this was the first step then the second step was also kind of um, building the and uh, building the and idea brand so in the first essence so we're like okay what is under so we kind of so we looked into the uh, the the brand and w- so basically and building the brand personality so what does under stand for why are we here and what are our values and what is your character looking like you know are we like a funky are we a funky brand are we like you know we're trustworthy we're this and we're that and we're also like the youth so we wanted to incorporate all of these elements and then uh, so we once we had that uh, in lock it was kind of easy to see what what's going to fit and what's not going to fit with us so once kind of i just like making um just like making a baby so when you know your baby you know what's going to work with it and what's not going to work and what you're happy to experiment with it you know so um that's ha- ha- that's how we started it at. so and then yeah so once we started the website okay we had our um, uh, vi- uh, overall vision we had our mission we had our goals, uh, goals for the fir- uh, first year and so on. So, um, and this also like, so any kind of uh, piece of content or so on has to kind of like fall into that uh, that brand or these values and then we, can, we take it off from there. I always like to get the perspective of like when a non-technical founder has to like go out and find the resources to build their, their vision. How was that for, for you when um, during those early, early days? So for uh, for us, the resources when we started um, building the uh, the website and the platform, we uh, we outsourced the developer, and then uh, we worked closely together in putting the aspects that we want to do. So once uh, and that took us around I think three months. So it took you three months to find a developer. No, no, we found a developer I think in uh, two weeks or so. Like uh, so many oh, websites, wow, okay. like Elance and. Uh, just like so many freelance uh, websites out okay, there that like, okay. can help you find ones with like with which whichever budget. I think we use this website that I cannot remember right now. Basically, we put our budget yeah. and we said this is a project. Upwork. Who's happy to take? And uh, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, it was Upwork. And then yeah, and then you just put your budget. Just say people, uh, whoever wants to, interested, and these are the specs. This is a brief. Go ahead and do it. And yeah, they worked really nicely with us. And um, awesome. that was that was for the website. And then when it comes to uh, the other the other resources such as the content and the design, uh, the content actually we reached out to um, uh, uh, our community and our close friends and um, who who uh, and whoever we had access to who could produce such a content to help us. And then on ground at the at the time it was. Uh, it was fortunate for us that um, Omnia was on ground, and so she was able to hire more designers and social media folks to help us like manage the platform and expand and just get the uh, the ball rolling. So before you guys actually started working on it, had she already moved back from California? Yeah, she ha- uh, she, she moved back to uh, from California in February. We, we started working um, in October 2014, and she moved back in uh, February 2015. So when we were just about to launch. Oh wow! Okay. What was it? Was it for that? For the reason? For the reason of uh, working on 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 Daria? Yes, that's one of the main reasons. Oh wow! That's awesome. That's commitment right there. Yeah. <laughs> we mean business. <laughs> I see. I see. I see. I see. That's great. That's great. So you know, one of the things I'm I'm also curious about. So obviously, you know, you're able to find a developer to get the uh, website up and going. Um, and it seems like you guys have just a variety of different content. I mean, you're, you're in, uh, Qatar. She's, uh, on the ground in, in Sudan. 
and you guys have some really, you know, some really, really fleshed out content. And I'm guessing you guys aren't writing it yourself, right? No, definitely. Or creating it yourself. <laughs> no, we have a, 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 a team of 60 contributors from all over. So oh, they, wow. they do help us in writing the content and producing it. We, uh, from our side, like, because uh, we're a bilingual platform, you can write in Arabic or English, whichever one, um, uh, one is more comfortable in. And then uh, we take that and uh, with our team, we translate it, we edit it, and just make sure it's like fine in both languages. Because our aim is to, to make sure like we're publishing it in Arabic and in English. Because a lot of the diaspora would uh, feel more comfortable in English. I mean, most of them. And people at home feel a lot comfortable in Arabic. And it can be both ways. It just we want to make sure we capture all audiences or Sudanese or South Sudanese and in whichever language they'd like to consume their content. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I'm guessing uh, you guys both speak both languages too. Yeah, we do. I, I want I wanted to ju- jump in a, a little bit real, real quick. Um, I I say real quick. It's it's never my. I never real quick. I digress. Um, but the the one thing like I, I kind of <laughs> <laughs> I is it's my personality. Um, I I want to I want to dive in a little bit of like um you have like a full range of content on, on your site now and it's today it's clear that you found a way to connect the content to your audience needs and, and what and what they um are looking to receive from from your brand. How how did that progression of the feedback that you connected with with the community in the early days and probably they're still sharing with you today how do you process that to to know that the content that you're delivering on the site is going to be represented of the community for us it's a cycle so basically once we're looking for uh, content we usually put a put a list of things that we think that appeals to 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 our audiences and that's it's not me and omnia only it's actually our team and who are like we have a diverse team we have interns so they tell us the thing that appeal to them so it's actually originated from the community and then we take that and then we approach our uh, writers and contributors and say okay hey guys would you like to do something along these lines or these themes and they come back to us so and then once we take it and polish it and produce it and put it into a nice piece of content, people are uh, are, ex- are excited and because it's actually something they, w- they were looking for and they wanted to talk about. And once we opened it up and uh, presented it to them, it's something that was so relatable to them. And it was something that's already in their mind and they wanted to discuss. So it all feeds back. So this, this creates a very engaged community, whether in the get-go or at the end of it when they're consuming the content and and actually that's not the end of it the end of it is when they share it and engage and comment and then just move to the next piece of content you have a well oiled machine now <laughs> <laughs> more or less that's great that's great so you know obviously you know you guys are working cross country cross continentally a, a lot a lot of different moving pieces how how do you guys like keep all of this organized? How do you guys communicate? What what does that look like between Qatar, Sudan, and you know these sixty team members that you guys have working for you? Technology and tech made it a lot easier, like with Skype and WhatsApp and Signal. So already the platforms are the tools are like easy to connect with anyone, everyone. Especially that now we're in times where everyone is stuck to their phone. So it is easy. Uh, it's, it is kind of manageable. And then at the same time, we, uh, uh, Omni and I and the team, we really have a good relationship. And uh, I think everyone is reliable. So we set out uh, deadlines. If this is, And we're also quite flexible and open. So if this is, works for you, if it's not. And also when we reach out to our contributors, we, we work ahead of time. And we're really becoming good at planning ahead. So this makes sure like... Recovered for the next two weeks, so whatever like kind of comes in late, or if something happens, or somebody needs to take time off, we're good for that period, or we can even like factor in some time to make sure things are like organized and in place. With you guys working on Andrea, and uh, you also mentioned earlier uh, Omnia being uh, in California, and that's where she kind of you know caught the the tech bug. You know, it seems like you guys really have put systems in place that I feel like. You know, a lot of people really don't understand the importance of setting those systems in place uh, fairly quickly. Did did you guys have, you know, some sort of advisor team or, you know, do you guys have like entrepreneurs in your family? Like how how are you guys able to so quickly go from, you know, idea to, you know, launching the platform to having, you know, this well-oiled machine? 
you know, within the last two years. Actually, you mentioned a very good point, like putting a system, uh, a system in place. So uh, for us, like we do have, we do have like our editorial planning and uh, also like a lot of the t- uh, tools on social media that help us schedule the like posts or whatever. So these things, like once you have a system and a plan and you can see what you have ahead, it really does help. And then also on the on the back end, like um, where like all the admin and the like contractual stuff and all that stuff, and even the editor uh, oversee uh, in our family's uh, Omnia's father. He's um, he's a uh, he's a top notch writer, and uh, so he can he and uh, he's also a part of the Sudanese Knowledge Society. So he's always been like um, our guru in terms of advice and and whatnot. And um, another thing is uh, one of our close advisors is uh, Reem Abbas, and Reem is um, is, a region, is a regional social media expert and a journalist. So Reem has been always helping us in terms of the content that we should um, uh, put out there, the, ca- the kind of campaigns that help the community uh, get us um, get hyped up about our projects and so on. So we, we made sure we have such a close-knit so- uh, society. That's, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So it sounds like you guys were able to, you know, come with this idea, obviously put in very hard work to, to call all these resources together, but also leverage people with specific expertise and leaning on their knowledge and expertise to help you guys from point A to point B, which I think is, you know, very important because you guys have, so like you guys have accomplished a lot within a very short period of time and with, you know, a variety of different constraints from the, the issues with uh, the economic sanctions, not allowing you guys to be able to more effectively uh, market and get people get some traction into the website so kudos kudos to you guys you guys are you guys are rocking oh thank you very much for that thank you you guys have moved way beyond just the, the you know i have an idea let me let me test something out you're, you're beyond the hypothesis so you, you you have content that's you know um connecting with your audience and you have you have your your well-oiled machine running right now i assume like the overall goal wasn't you know just to you know pump, pump out content but also you know create a sustainable um business model that that can yeah. continue to grow the, the business for for our listeners who are probably wondering about building you know similar business model within this space what are the questions or conversations that that you and omnia had in developing that strategy for um for for your business model okay so uh our goal was to build a sustainable business model but we had to phase out to phase it out and just see how it will unfold for us at the beginning we didn't really have a clear business model because uh we had to understand that uncertainty in the sudanese market is quite high and also that model of um producing content does not really usually gives you a lot of sustainability you will need a, like a funding from outside or so on so however um throughout the first year we're like okay let's invest in this let's just make sure we meet the expectations that we set out to, to ourselves and make sure the content is great the website is great and so on but and throughout this year it was such like a massive learning experience for us we were able to um, to hone a lot of the skills that was uh, necessary for the Sudanese market as a whole. So at the t- uh, we were able to, to, do, to build and develop a very like robust social media platforms. We uh, become experts in crafting posts and all these like small things, actually that are not so small, these are ver- valuable knowledge, how to get your audiences engaged. So we found ourselves a uh, place to uh, in a place where like the social media gurus in Sudan. So once we, we once we developed that and um, were able to do it, then we started we're like, okay, let's help out other businesses or actually uh, big pages in, uh, in Sudan for businesses to get their uh, their social media pages up to up to speed and help make it look good. So we started being uh, consultants to help them um, to and we offered services based on our knowledge in the Sudanese market. And from that, we were able to generate um, uh, income and revenue streams. So our mo- our business model that we uh, uh, created is, okay, we build the content. Uh, we don't do advertising yet. We have not monetized the platform. However, we outsource our uh, services from like editing to, tra- to, tra- to translation to X, Y, and Z. So we have our, our team. We can even do campaigns from A to Z, like we do media coverage, we do uh, photography, videography, and at the same time, in that 
first year where we developed our product very well, we also built our network so we can tap into the, the best photographers in Sudan. We know who they are. We have close relationships with them. So it was kind of easy that uh, for us to tap into all of these resources and become the one-stop shop or slash agency to clients who wanted to do like social media campaigns and so on. So that was... Um, that is actually our main revenue stream. And uh, in the next uh, couple of years, we also want to look into monetizing our platform. We just need to see how that will unfold with the market and the existing like uh, sanctions and so on. You guys, you guys are you know out there, out there, you know, really making making things happen. That's that's awesome. I feel like there's like no excuse for people on the state side, you know. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like there's there's no excuse, uh, no matter where you are in the world. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no you know what? You have a phone, you have internet, internet connection. You need to get things done. That's it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you guys are you guys are really doing your thing right now. Yeah, and so far it's been I mean, working well for us. Like I think we've uh, like since the I think the first year we invested, but ever since the platform has been able to sustain itself and even like generate a little bit of tr- profit. But so far we're good. Like I think we're in a good place. This is kind of in line to what we were just saying previously. We're, we're, we're non-technical founders, and so we seek out information from what's happening in Silicon Valley and things of that nature. But mm-hmm. Silicon Valley is like a utopia and so like what happens in the other 99 percent of the world is, is a little bit different you got to craft it to, to to your environment and so um what how, how have you been able to carve out some of that knowledge that, that you you know build as your foundation but tailor it into into your your market where uh within sudan or uh with yeah within that sudan market i think First of all, knowing the Sudanese uh, Sudanese market and knowing the Sudanese audiences uh, has has not been the e- like the easiest thing to get off like you know your typical data consumer research and insights. So this has been also a gap that we tried to fill, and um, so we lacked consumer insights and consumer data in a systematic way. Uh, so, however, like the input again from the community and what they like know and like, and also kind of our gut feeling which kind of led us to uh, to do a lot of uh, things that we know that would resonate well with people uh, was kind of like a, a foundation for us to help to help us maneuver how we would uh, navigate the market and also uh, mentioning on this point and then and we also co-founded another uh, a research arm if we, we call it mhop and mhop uh, looks into like consumer and uh, consumers inside either industrial or for like b2c so uh, with that, we're, when we're looking at, into MHOP and Consumer Insights, we, we already have this database of Sudanese audiences who are really niche and you can't get them anywhere uh, thanks to sanctions. So we were able to have that uh, audience base and able to tap into them and help have like uh, Consumer Insights that we use to ourselves and also uh, help uh, other startups and businesses across Sudan. You're, you're like laying the foundation for other innovations to come into the S- Sudan region. They'll have like a pipeline of, of insights for the future. So, I mean, let's, you, you guys are ahead of the curve. It's, it's, it's like you're blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it just mean I think uh, in Sudan there is a lot of opportunities and it's such, um, it is such a, an inter- interesting place. Like there is so much opportunity and there are so many hurdles. You just need to know how to maneuver it in the right way. Once you have once you have that knowledge and you gain it, then obviously you can't you can't find out that over overnight. You just have to live it out and see how it goes. Like this is a little bit of a side note, but I've been diving more into like since preparing for this this conversation with you, I've been diving into like a lot of your your past articles. And there's one thing that I came across from like the BBC that did like a photo op of just this uh, the whole Sudan region and just tourism alone can be like. A, a huge like opportunity just from like the vast artifacts like museums and things of that nature like the culture you know it's, it's rich and so this is is i i can see how like like there's opportunity for you know growth to just people c- to connect with that region and um your, your platform is, is an amazing way to you know share that yeah definitely tourism and um it's really like having a big hype right now and so then we actually will have one of the oldest civilization on earth and sadly it's not it has not been given its share of publicity that it deserves however i think now it's picking up and hopefully the infrastructure will catch up there and uh, uh hopefully i don't know maybe one day you can guys visit us in sudan and see it out for yourself yeah that'd be awesome i i definitely uh plan on on visiting not only my home country nigeria 
uh, very soon, but you know, doing a lot more traveling and in, in the on the rest of the continent. Yeah, that, that's yeah. that's great. So, so I'm I'm curious. You know, obviously you're you're from Sudan. Uh, you currently live in Qatar. Is 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 there any sort of plan to kind of expand Andrea's uh, footprint outside of Sudan? Yes, we definitely want to uh, uh, expand. Uh, right now, we're focused on Sudan and South Sudan, but South Sudan does, is, has been quite a ch- challenge for us because it's been hard finding uh, talents and resources to help us cover cover South Sudan better. And we also want to take our model uh, in countries where there is, um, especially a lot in, in Africa, where uh, in post-conflict areas and in conflict. So... Uh, and just create, so we want to take them in Paris. So whichever country we want to go into, we want to go to, into a place that, that's been post-conflict and redo this model all, 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 all over again and take all the learnings and just stick to our mission of um, amplifying stories and uh, encourage that cultural uh, post-conflict engagement. We all know there's definitely uh, a lot of conflict in uh, there's a lot of uh, countries that are post-conflict right now, and hopefully they all stay post-conflict and not in conflict uh, <laughs> exactly. in, in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in, in the future here. You know, I really do, and I, I really pray, I really pray about that because I feel like that has definitely, you know, stunted the, the, the economic growth of, of of a lot of different countries on the continent and stolen the future of the youth for for generations previously and you know i think right now it's it's a perfect time for companies like uh, Andrea and you know young people on the continent to explore their ideas and get the information that they need to make those ideas a reality and not only is that something that we're trying to do here at Innovator Tribe but really also just really share you know, stories like yours so people can see that it's being done under very, you know, constrained circumstances, but you guys are still still making it happen. So so thank you. Thank you for that. And honestly, thank you for, for inviting us and having such uh, a great podcast. I wish I knew of uh, Invader Stripe way earlier before I started the Twitter probably made my life a lot easier and having that source of inspiration <laughs> seriously outside silicon valley because nobody thinks anything can happen outside silicon valley you know that centric way of thinking so kudos to you guys it's really much appreciated thank, oh, thank you thank you thank you well yeah we're, we're, we're just getting started too <laughs> <laughs> i look forward to seeing it grow um so, so did, did we get are we are we at that are we yeah. at the general? Yeah, yeah, I feel, yeah. I feel you know, like I, we've we we we've covered uh, so much, and you know, I'm 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 very excited for our audience to to hear you know your guys' story. But before before we go ahead and wrap up mm-hmm. the interview, we like to uh, have what we call our, our gem rounds, mm-hmm. and uh, essentially, we're just going to ask you uh, a series of questions, and uh, you can answer them any way you see fit. And I, I, I'll let uh, Ahmad go ahead and kick it off. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. So the the um the first question that, that we ask is what top three tools will you have recommended to yourself when you first started working on the idea? Well definitely it would be uh, Google Analytics to keep track of your website traffic. And um, uh, I'd say uh, social baker, that's um, a social media analytics tool too. And uh, an editorial uh, an editorial calendar, maybe. I also wish I had access to Time Buddy because it really helps, which is um, a, like a, an app that helps you kind of manage people in different time zones, so you can see what time when they see when they say it's 10 a.m. CST. You know what time this is in your zone. You just see it on their calendar. Download it; it's awesome. I haven't heard about Social Baker. I oh, so, uh, it's such a cool uh, tool that helps you like see and predict the performance of your uh, posts. So once you post it organically, you see you, it makes you see, hey, is is it worth promoting? And also just keeps track of all of your social media platforms and how they're performing. Nice. So I I wish if I had access to that a lot earlier, it would have made our life easier. Yeah, we're definitely uh you know looking to focus on on social and. You know all that good stuff, so I'm I'm definitely gonna check that out. So the next question, you know, obviously you're working on this great platform, uh, and you also have you know other obligations as well. 
and you're, you know, managing a team of 60 uh, across different countries, right? So, so that, that's, that's a lot. That, that'd be a lot for, you know, anybody. Uh, how, how, how are you keeping yourself sane? Well, um, first, it's, uh, it's good to know that there is uh, two of us and there is um, a wider team. So, uh, like, the, uh, actually, the, the core team is uh, th- uh, three of us who are, like, do all the planning and stuff. So um, it's me, myself, and Omnia. And um, it's, it is kind of hard when you have, like, a nine-to-five job. But Wait, I think back, with- hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. <laughs> because I feel like this. So, so you said it's three of you guys. So it's, you said it's you, yourself, and Omnia? And Lujane. Okay, so the three of okay. us are like. Because I, like, I don't think you count yourself as two people. I don't think I don't think Omnia would appreciate you counting yourself as two people. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought that was funny. No, no, it is funny. I, I just didn't get it as much. <laughs> okay. He's so, not the comedian. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm really down, but I just wanted to clarify. Okay. You know, so when people hear it, like, oh, man, he just counted himself <laughs> twice and I'm here once. <laughs> Me, yeah, okay, so uh, between Omni and, uh, and I and also uh, another team member, Lujain, uh so the three of us uh, already put a system in place, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, planning ahead is key, uh, spreading the work cloud between us and whenever um something is coming up we're happy like to share and this we and also communication is key so once you're able to communicate and say okay let's get this done do this and x y and z and also we're very committed and motivated so this makes it easier to even like go into work after i come back from my full-time job so um yeah i think this is key okay okay we'll keep keeping it rolling the next question we always ask is um what is your favorite business book Oh, yeah, I just uh, read, it, read it last year, Lean In by um, Sheryl Sandberg. It's about women and women um, women in the workplace in general and how um, actually like we dislike how we should like go forward. It's, it's, it's not really your typical uh, self-help book, but I think it's kind of very important to understand where you stand in the business culture as a woman and what you should do and what you should be mindful of. Because a lot of the times, um, us as women need to like, you know, be on the super nice end or just like be too communal and giving away. So it's kind of important to put our foot down and just be mindful of all the things that happen. So that was a very good business book. I'd recommend it to anyone, anywhere. Yeah, that one was all over the, it's been all over the bookshelves for sure. Yeah, yeah so. it has been, yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I've definitely uh, been following <clears throat> the author and I love, I love, you know, what she, what she represents. And as far as just, you know, inspiring, you know, other women to, uh, you know, step into leadership roles unabashedly. I think I think that's I think that's great. Uh, OK, so the last question uh, of the gem rounds, what is something that you do not want an app to replace? Oh, that's a very tricky question. <laughs> like, I wish I had an app for everything, honestly, like. I already love my shopping <laughs> apps. I love my books app, like Goodreads, all this good stuff. Like, I don't know. It's really hard. Um, but this is a very tricky question. I already <laughs> love all of like FaceTime, IMO, Signal, WhatsApp. Like, what is there not to replace on an app? I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe like Taylor. I don't, I don't know. I can't answer this question. <laughs> oh, this- what is your answer to this question? What would you love an app? <laughs> Oh yeah, we we don't want to ask the questions. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> what it, what would be my answer? <laughs> no, I mean, why like, you guys tell me you've been in this doing this show for some time? What is your answer? But I haven't had to answer the question though, so it's. <sighs> Come on, think about it. What about you, Ty? I don't want to absolutely replace flying planes, like. Uh, well, I guess it kind of does already, but there's still a pilot in the plane. Like self car- self driving cars, I could I could deal with. I don't think I could deal with the self driving plane like without a pilot in it. I know they fly themselves for the most part, but it's still got a pilot. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, that- I think yeah, that's risky. I think yeah, a human should always like. But it doesn't have to be within technology. You know, some people, you know. Mm. Okay, that's that's a good one. What about you, Ty? <laughs> I love how she like turned the, she just turned the interview. <laughs> she thought about this leaning is, in, is, and now she's is, like, "Tell right? us." <laughs> definitely, this is definitely a first. 
I love it. It's, it's cool. Leave, leave it up to African woman. Leave it up to African woman. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, when you're, you know, you got to ask the same questions too. <laughs> um, I would say, I would say, uh, the human, human interaction, human connection. You know, I feel like with, you know, social media and, you know, WhatsApp and Skype and all that stuff. I just hope that we don't get to a place where, you know, that innate uh, desire for human connection gets replaced. Um, yeah, I think yeah, that that's super true. That's 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 what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope it will never be replaced. Yeah, the human story and the human connection—that's what it's all about. Um, good, good on you guys. These were some good answers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> we appreciate being on your show. <laughs> uh, uh, I have to say, I have to say, this was it was definitely a, a pleasure uh, talking with you, and you know, hearing your story. As I mentioned when when I first read the article on AFK Insider, I just got really excited because I really want to hear you know what how you guys came up with the idea and how you guys brought it to fruition and it seemed like you guys were able to do it uh very well and it seemed like you guys are definitely on 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 a path to you know even grow it even bigger than what it is now so i'm definitely excited for you guys and i'm looking forward to what you guys are going to be uh putting out here in the future oh thank you so much uh guys and we really appreciate it and we're sorry about the technical problems that we kept facing at the beginning but i'm glad this went very well and i really had fun recording this with you guys same here, same here. It's been a blast. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited what you guys have in store. Yeah, um, I, we can't wait to hear the podcast and splash it out all on our social media. Sweet. Awesome, awesome. Right. Thank you, guys. Bye.